I'm mindful that Tony and I can rattle on for an hour. So, go, so guys, I uh, encourage you to uh, ask questions. We're here to uh, answer anything that you've got along the way. Um, there is a small lag between you typing it and us seeing it. So uh, we will, I, I can assure you, get to your questions. Uh, anything that you've got in and around the mindset space, um, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd, love right. to, we'd love to answer. So uh, that, well, Alex, here's one. Uh, Alex says, you did a great job yesterday, Tony, helping Rob out. Oh, thank you. That's not a question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. don't make him feel thank good. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Alex. I uh, really, really, really appreciate yeah, it. So uh, thank terrific. You. Thank uh, you. Give that uh, a like. Thank you. So one of the other things that we cover off in the psychology weekend is around personal priority. And by that I mean that in order to shift your life forward, you need to put yourself first. And a lot of people really struggle with that concept. They struggle to put themselves first. Uh, you know, they put their job first, perhaps their family and friends first. But if you want to be successful in, in this instance, property development, you've got to sacrifice. We touched on that earlier. You've got to put yourself um First, you have to make yourself a priority. That doesn't mean be selfish. That means, and for me, it's about going through a morning routine, putting myself first every single morning, getting my mind right, filling my cup up, so that then I'm able to give so much more to other people. But you need to be able to, uh, you need to be able to put yourself first. Uh, that is key in order to be successful. We got a question here, Rob. Yeah, Jess says, um, I fear stagnation more than anything, but just as important to have others to help you guide. Uh, when not to go for it and when to pull back. That's where the PDN gold, that's where PDN is gold for me. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, So that's uh, more of a statement, but I think we can talk to stagnation. Well, stagnation, procrastination. Uh, so uh, there's some linkage there, right? Stagnation means not moving forward. Procrastination is a fear. Procrastination is, uh, you know, uh, you know, where you're fearful of doing something, so all of a sudden the kitchen's never been tidier, the yard's never looked uh, better when you know that you should be grinding it out, doing those difficult tasks. And one of the things with uh, how, how you can change is to elevate the consciousness of your thought. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, we aren't conscious that we're procrastinating until maybe a day or two later or an hour or so um, after the event. We're sort of in our um, operating system, we're on autopilot, and we're just procrastinating. Then we go, oh, hang on a second, I wasted a whole afternoon doing something. And so the key to change is to start to elevate your consciousness. And how you can do that is through uh, a nightly reflection of your day, as simple as grabbing a pen, grabbing a piece of paper, and seeing if there are some moments during the day when perhaps you procrastinated. And the more that you write things down, the more you're going to elevate your <coughs> level of consciousness, then what will happen is the time frame between um, the procrastinating moment and when you recognise it becomes shorter and shorter and shorter to a point when then you get an opportunity to the choice to do something about it. You'll actually recognise it at the moment it's at, happening. At, at the moment. And, and at that point, you then have the choice. That's you have the choice. The, that's the key. Does, doesn't mean that you still won't uh, proceed to procrastinate, but you're choosing to procrastinate at that point in time as opposed to when you recognise it, uh, I would strongly encourage you then to do whatever you need to do to take you closer to your goal. So whether it be getting on price finder, calling an agent, whatever it might be. Uh, but yes, the more that you can elevate your your consciousness, the greater chance you have of doing something about it. And as I said, it's it's pretty um, easy to overcome. One of the things is uh, you know just talking about uh, operating with our or operating on autopilot or with our operating system is how do you respond when someone cuts you off in traffic? You know, and so, you know, typically what people will do is they'll go into autopilot, they'll honk the horn, they'll flip the bird, they'll be swearing, they'll carry on. That's their operating system. And it's all about recognising that's how you operate, recognising that you don't want to operate in that way because um, can you control that situation? No, you can't. Uh, what, how is it serving you getting angry at that person who cut you off? It's going to put you behind five or ten seconds. Big deal. You know, so again, it's recognising that I acted in a particular way, I behaved in a particular way, and now that I start to get conscious with it, I now have the choice around how I choose to act uh, moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a, uh, a concept that I like to talk to, which is the circle and the square. So oh. if, you imagine, uh, if you imagine a square mm. and then you put a circle inside of it touching mm. all of the boundaries, yeah. uh, inside the circle is everything that you have... Uh, influence over and everything inside the square is everything you have a care factor over mm. uh, and you'll find that the circle doesn't reach the corners and so mm. you you care about it but you can't influence it mm. and so when you start to recognize that as much as you care nothing mm. that you're going to do is actually going to change the outcome 
you can start to accept that, well, if I can't change it, mm. then, uh, you know, I need to start to learn to deal with it. Deal with it. Why am I wasting time on it? Uh, you know, control the controllables is another way that you can frame it up. Uh, focus on the things that you control. Too often we worry about stuff that's out of our control. And I'll give you a good example in property development. Um, a vendor accepting your offer. You can't control that, right? You can uh, do your feasibility, put in an offer that you think will be accepted. But at the end of the day, uh, it's up to someone else to accept that offer or not. You then have the choice as to what you do with your offer, but it's a really simplistic way, uh, an example of just showcasing that that's out of your control. Uh, you know, so you really want to challenge yourself and just focus on the things that you can influence over, as, as Rob said, but far too often we get worried about all these external things that we ultimately have no control over. And all you're doing is you're expending es uh, energy unnecessarily uh, when really you should be putting your energy on the things that are going to take you closer to your goal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now I can see a couple of comments yeah. coming through. So Matt's joined and Steve's joined. So Hello, guys. Folks. Hi from Sydney. Uh, how are you both? Hopefully yeah. you're going well. Yeah. Coming in about halfway through the show, folks. So uh, make sure you rewind. There's some gold in there. Yeah, absolutely. So look, uh, really keen to hear uh, any more questions, any more comments around uh, you know success mindset. I mean, it is the largest contributing factor to your property development success. You know, you can uh, acquire the knowledge. Uh, you can learn some skills, but it's the stuff between your ears, your psychology, your mindset, your attitudes that are really going to be the key uh, between whether you're successful uh, or whether you're not in property development. Um, here we go. So uh, Michael says, uh, Tony, you could talk a little about goal setting, uh, starting with the end in mind, and what do you have uh, what do you have to do today, tomorrow, next week to achieve this? Perfect. Okay, great. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate the question. So that's all about uh, reverse engineering is another way to uh, describe this where you have an, an end goal. That end goal could be three months, six months, 12 months, whatever. Uh, and, and create an end goal that you're comfortable with. So you've got an end goal. Uh, then you've got where you are right now. And in between it uh, is a whole range of actions, tasks, milestones that you need to uh, you need to accomplish. What Michael's referring to is say your end goal is 12 months from now, what we do is we then halve that end goal to be six months. So at the six month milestone, uh, where do you need to be? What are the things that you need to have done? Then you halve it again, you bring it to three months. Uh, again, uh, milestones, actions, tasks at three months. Halve it again at one month. Uh, halve it again to two weeks, halve it again to one week uh, tomorrow and today. And so when you work backwards from that end goal, you've then gone and created yourself a plan to then take you forwards. The other key thing to recognise is that uh, your, your, your tasks, your milestones are not necessarily linear. So by that I mean that, uh, you know, six months is half of 12. So if you've got a goal to achieve $100,000 uh, through property development in 12 months, you won't necessarily be at $50,000 at the six month mark. Uh, because what happens is you front end all of your efforts. So, you know, one of the first things that you would do, say you're new to property development, is you would learn about property development. You would uh, go to meetups, uh, join up courses, uh, etc. So you're front loading uh, all of your effort at the start. Um, you're also then uh, putting in a whole lot of offers, etc. doing a whole lot of activities where if you looked at it as a graph, you would be uh, you know, going along the bottom, uh, doing a whole lot of effort, having a little bit of success, having some failures, more success, failures, et cetera, to a point then when you start to exponentially achieve your goal. So you can still achieve your goal of $100,000. It just means that you won't get there in a straight line. There are some things, however, where you would get there in a straight line. But that's what Michael's referring to there around creating a plan. And look, it comes down to uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so you can want all you want uh, to be uh, a successful in property development, but you have to create a plan. You have to create a pathway to success. Uh, the great thing is that being involved in the property developer network is that there's an enormous number of people who have gone and created success through property development. There will be people in that community who have gone and done what you're wanting to do. I'll guarantee it. And so it's all about then spending time with, with that pe person or people uh, to understand how they're able to do it. But I'll guarantee you that all of those people created a plan, an action plan uh, of success and they followed it because that's the other thing. You know, you can go and write down a plan so you can go and, okay, great, I've got a 12 month goal and then I've got a six month you know, milestone, et cetera, et cetera, write it all down. But the next piece, 
uh, is then the A word, which is called action. Yeah. You have to do the action. If you want uh, six-pack abs, you have to do the sit-ups. You have to eat well. Uh, no different in property development. You have to do the work required to be successful in property development. A lot of people want the glory that is property development. They they read the, the BRW you know, top 100 rich list and they see a lot of people in there have property development success. They want the end goal, but they're not prepared to put the effort in uh, along the way. And you know, there's an enormous amount that goes on behind the scenes that we don't see. You know, we're, we're sitting here on a Sunday afternoon. Most people normally uh, watching a bit of footy or whatever on a Sunday afternoon, of course, up until five o'clock, and they switch on to, to this, uh, you know, wonderful uh, viewing uh, channel. But, uh, you know, sporting stars, there's an enormous amount that goes on behind the scenes that we don't see, yet all we see on the weekend is, is all of the, the great stuff, the tries, the, the, the wonderful play, etc. So there's an enormous amount of stuff that needs to happen uh, in order for you to be successful in property development. And that's why, you know, the very first question that we ask people is why? Why do you want to do this in the first place? Uh, it's it's not easy. It's not for the faint-hearted. Yes, there's a path that you can follow, but it's difficult. And, you know, you're going to have ups and downs. And, you know, you speak to any property developer who's having uh, some level of success or even those who are in the, in, in, in the, in the court program or those who are, you know, wanting to be property developers, you have ups and downs. And the key is coming back to the mindset to pull you through when you have those uh, challenging moments. Yeah, and I'd, I'd add to that to say that uh, it's like brushing your teeth. You you don't go to your dentist uh, once every two years and, and hope that you're going to have a clean bill of health. Mm. You've got to be working on your mindset every single day. You've got to be brushing your teeth every mm. single day yeah. uh, because prevention is way better than cure. Of course it is. Uh, and if you, can, if you can work on that mindset every single day, uh, you know, wake up in the morning with, uh, with a morning routine, mm. uh, have some positive affirmations, uh, redefine your goals every single day, mm. uh, take steps towards those goals every single day. Yep. Uh, you, you've got... Reward you, yourself, you're positive reward reinforcement. Yourself. You, you are going to succeed. If you work on it every single day, mm. you, you are, it's inevitable that you will succeed. Correct.